morning, everyone. This is Mr. Rowe. I'm going to show you how to solve some quadratic inequality problems. These are similar, not exact, some of the ones you're going to see in your uh, coursework. So for the first one, uh, we're just going to kind of talk about how to go through these. You've got your instruction in um, Imagine Learning, so I, I'm just kind of going through the process of solving. So let's, so let's look at this first one. It says solve the following inequality. So we've got a factored quadratic. How do I know it's quadratic? Because if I was to multiply the, you know, the first two terms, I'd get an x squared. So how do you, if, if this was x plus 2 and x minus 1 equals 0, what would you do to find the solutions? Well, you would set each one of these equal to 0. Well, that's the same process we're going to do here, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to the final answer in just a second. So let's start off with that process. So what are the two critical values is what we're going to call them here. So the two critical values are x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. So now that's the solutions if this was an equation, but this is an inequality. So how is that different? Well, an inequality has to have an answer that's an inequality. So how are we going to turn our critical values into an inequality? Well, we've, we've got some choices. We can either make this x, and we're going to use the same symbol here, x is less than or equal to negative 2, x is greater than or equal to negative 2, x is less than or equal to 1, x is greater than or equal to 1. So we got some choices here. we got to put them together in the right order. Well, we're going to kind of use uh, this symbol right here to kind of help us guide what we choose. So we, we've got this one and this one. These are less than. Now this is when the variables are on the left-hand side. Less than or and inequalities. And so an and inequality has the variable in the middle with the two critical values so we got a number here and a number here, and then we got our symbols in between facing the same direction. So either that one or that one. So since this is a less than inequality, the variables are on the left. I know that my final answer is going to be negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1. And then you can test that value and see what you get. So you could put in, for example, if we put in 0 into that, We'd have 0 plus 2, 0 minus 1. That would have to be less than or equal to 0. Well, that's 2 times negative 1, which is less than 0. Well, that's true because negative 2 is less than or equal to 0. So we know that's the inequality. Always do a test point to make sure you get the right inequality. All right, so let's look at this next example. Similar situation here. So we've got a factored quadratic. Uh, this time we have a great or than, I like to use that word, greater than inequality. So we're going to go through the same process. We're going to factor or we're going to solve our factors. So let's see, let's get a better color here. So we're going to set x minus 2 equal to 0, x minus 5 equal to 0. So our two critical values or our two solutions are x equals 2 and x equals 5. So now, again, we're, we've got some choices. We've got x can be greater than or equal to 2. x can be less than or equal to 2. We've got x can be greater than or equal to 5. x is less than or equal to 5. These are all possible things that we could use. Well, which ones are the correct ones? Well, we're going to kind of use this as a guide. So this is a great or than inequality. Again, variables are on the left. That's the key to use this. If the variables are on the left, you might have to do some other things, but we're going to assume that we have them on the left and get this right. So here's how that works. We're going to take the smaller one. So 2 is the smaller one. 2 is the smaller critical value. And it has to be less than or equal to that. And then it has to be or and then the other one would have to be greater than or equal to the bigger one. So those are the two we're going to choose. And so, again, testing a point. We're going to test a point 
in the middle, in between these two values to see what we got here. So let, let's test a value such as, let's just put in three, because three is in between these two. So if I put in three as my test point, I've got three minus two times x minus five, not three minus five. Pay attention, Mr. Rowe. And that would have to be greater than or equal to zero for it to be true. Well, this would be one. This would be negative two. Well, one times negative two is negative two. That's not greater than or equal to zero. So I know it's not an and statement. I know it's not in between. I know it has to be the extremes on the outside. So that's the process for doing that one. And so that's how you would do one of those. All right, so let's take a look at this. So again, we got to select the graph that represents this quadratic inequality. Well, we're going to go through the same process. This, this is, has um, x minus 1 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0. Get our critical values. x has to equal 1. x has to equal negative 2. We've got a great or then or. So an or, I know automatically that these two are out because that's an in-between. That's an and statement. So I just had to pick the one with the right value. Well, I've got negative 2 as an extreme. So we got to pick the one with negative 2 and then the one with positive 1. And so writing, going back to what we just did in the last one, this would have to be x and then it's uh, bigger than the larger value, smaller than the smallest value. And so there's your inequality. All right, so now let's get into some of the quadratic things. Select the graph that represents the inequality below. So here's our inequality. And we want to select the graph that represents that inequality. Well, we're going to do some of the same things we did when we did uh, solving quadratics. We're going to look at line type because it's an inequality. We're going to look at places where it crosses the x-axis because it's a quadratic, and then we're going to put it together and draw a graph. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor. I'm going to factor the inequality. So I've got, you know, x, x, and then I want to find factors of 6 that add to be 5. So what are some factors of 6 that add to be 5? Well, that's 2 and 3. So I'm going to put my 2 and 3 in there. This tells me that the signs are the same. This tells me which one to use. So this will be plus 2 plus 3. And so these are going to be my critical values. You know, the solutions to a quadrat quadratic are where the parabola crosses the, the, the x-axis. So this is going to be the values where it crosses the x-axis. So it's going to cross the x-axis at negative 2, and it's going to cross the x-axis at negative 3. So just a quick sketch. So I've got negative... 2 and negative 3. So I know it's going to cross um, here some way. It's either going to open up, or excuse me, up, or it's going to open down. Now how do I know which is which? I look at the leading coefficient. If it's positive, it opens up. If it's negative, it opens down. So this is a quadratic inequality with a leading coefficient that's positive. So I know it's going to have this sort of, and at this point it doesn't matter what it is, but I just know it has a curve like this. And I'm just sketching, so I'm not, I'm not really concerned about uh, anything else. I, I need to find the ones that have negative 2 and negative 3. And then because it's an inequality, we have to shade the correct area. And now let's look at the line type. That's a less than. So these two have dashed. A parabola, so I have to dash my parabola here a little bit. I'll do my best to dash it. So there it's dashed. And then I have to decide where to shade. Now I'm either going to shade inside or I'm going to shade outside. What's the easiest way to do that? Test a point. I mean, you can do learn lots of things, but testing a point is something that you can do for all of them. So I'm going to test 0, 0. Put it into the inequality. So I'm going to put 0 is less than or equal to 0 squared plus 5 times 0 plus 6. If I get a true answer, if this is a true statement, then I shade where that critical that the test point is. 
If it's not, I shade the other side. So this will tell me whether to shade outside or inside. So zero less than or equal to six. This is true because zero is less than six. So that means when I shade this, I'm shading around the outside of the parabola. So then I'm going to come over to my choices. I'm going to find the one that has a dashed line, number one. So since it's dashed automatically, I have, there it is. These two are out because those are solid. I have a dash and I want to shade outside. So A is going to be my correct answer. All right, now let's go the other way. What if I'm given the graph and then I want to write the inequality? Okay, so this is kind of the opposite. So there's two, there's two situations here. There's the easy situation, and then there's one that's a little more difficult. I mean, and neither one are tr truly 100% difficult, but, you know, one is a little more difficult than the other. So let's look at this first one. This is the easy one. This one is where I know what these critical values are right here. So I can term it, determine them without question by looking at the graph. So this means that x equals negative one x equals three so those are my two critical values so i can put those into an inequality or into a um, quadratic so x plus one and x minus three now how did i get that well if x equals negative one if i add one to both sides i get x plus one equals zero if i subtract three i get x minus three equals zero so those are my two factors Okay, so I'm going to have a y, and then I'm going to have to determine whether it's greater than, equal to, just greater than, less than, equal to, or less than. I'm going to have to determine one of those. And then I'm going to have to see if there's a leading coefficient. So all of this is kind of just, you know, testing what I got. So, so first of all, let's see where it's going to be shaded. Let's, well, let's, let's do the leading coefficient first. Let's see if there's a leading coefficient. So how do I determine if there's a leading coefficient? I'm going to put in another point that's obvious. So right here, I've got a vertex, which is kind of an obvious point, 1, negative 4. So I'm going to go to my inequality. And I'm actually going to treat it like it's an equation. So this will be y equals... And then I'm going to put x plus 1, x minus 3. And I'm going to say that there's an a there. We'll see if it's 1, 0, or something else. And so we'll put in our vertex. Our vertex is 1, negative 4. Just to see if we have a leading coefficient other than 1. So this will be negative 4 equals a times x is 1. So this will be 1 plus 1 times 1 minus 3. And so we'll have negative 4 equals a times 2 times negative 2. So this would be negative 4 equals a times negative 4. Well, I can already tell that a is going to equal 1. So this would be my equation. Now I just need to determine which inequality it is. Well, again, test the point. See if you get a true statement. I'm thinking because it's shaded outside that it's going to be a less than. So we're going to we're going to test that less than x plus one, x plus two, or excuse me, where did I get the x plus two from? It's x minus three. I went back to that, <sighs> Mr. Rome. Sometimes I got to pay attention to what I'm doing. So I'm thinking it's less than, so I'm going to test the point. I'm going to test 0, 0. Anytime 0, 0 is the point, you want to test it. So 0 would be less than 0 plus 1. 0 minus 3 is 0 less than negative 3. Well, that's false. So that means I shouldn't shade here. So I should not shade 0, 0. Well, it's not shaded, so that means I have the correct inequality. So my final answer here would be y is less than x plus 1, x minus 3. Now another possible answer would be y is less than x squared, 
and then that would be what minus that's minus 3x plus 1x minus 2x minus 3 so those are your two possible choices for an answer okay now what about this one <clears throat> okay this one's a little more difficult because we don't know what these critical values are now we can guess that that's negative one and a half or positive one and a half and positive two and a half but we're not sure so we can't use those so we're going to have to go vertex form so vertex form is a x minus h squared plus k and so we'll figure out this equation based on vertex form so how do we do that well we find the vertex the vertex is right there it's 2 1 so our vertex is 2 1 we'll substitute that into the equation y equals a times x minus 2 squared plus 1. And if you don't remember that you're going to have to go back and review some quadratics that you did in algebra 1 uh, look at how to write the you know, quadratics in vertex form so now we need to determine the value of a well how do we determine the value of a we find one point and I just like to use, if it's available, I like to use an intercept. So there's a, a y-intercept at 0, negative 7. And so I'm going to plug that in to find a. So we got negative 7 equals a times 0 minus 2 squared plus 1. And then 0 minus 2 squared is negative 2. So that's times 4 because negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 plus 1. Okay, now we're just going to solve the equation here. We got negative 7 equals 4a plus 1. Subtract 1. That gives me negative 8 equals 4a. And so negative 2 equals a. So I have my quadratic equation. My quadratic equation is y equals negative 2 times x minus 2 squared plus 1. So that's my quadratic equation. How do I turn it into an inequality? I'm going to kind of assume that since uh, the parabola opens down and it's shaded outside, that this is going to be a greater than inequality. And that's just using logic, nothing spectacular. I'm just making a guess and seeing if I'm right. I'm going to test 0, 0. So I'll put in 0. See if I'm right. 0 would have to be greater than negative 2 times 4 plus 1. And where 4 from, come from, negative 2 squared is 4. And so 0 would have to be greater than negative 8 plus 1. Well, yeah, that's true. So that means the outside should be shaded. So I've got the correct inequality right here. I know this is getting kind of long, but this is everything that you got to do in your lesson. So hopefully this will help you as you're doing your assignments. All right. So let's look at these two word problems and then we're done. So the profit of a food truck can be modeled by the function. It's a quadratic function where C represents the price of one hot dog. What is the range of prices where the truck will make money? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just, because it's getting kind of long, we're going to help you set it up and go through it real quickly. Um, so making money means what? It means the profit has to be greater than zero. So if we have our quadratic inequality, that's the profit. So that has to be greater than, and it says make money. It doesn't say break even. It says make money. So this has to be greater than zero. And so we're going to go through the process of solving this quadratic inequality from here. Uh, first thing I notice is that everything is uh, divisible by 100 because we have, you know, all of them have hundreds in it, two zeros. So we're going to divide everything by 100. And actually, we're going to make it negative 100 because the leading coefficient needs to be positive. And so that's going to give us c squared, 2c squared, plus or minus 19, plus 35, 
is less than zero. And so now we'll go through and factor from here. Um, we'll pull up a calculator here in a second. I think. So let's see. I, I got it ready just in case I need it. So I'm going to do my critical values. Now this is a process. We're, we're still going to factor if we can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to you know multiply 2 times 35 to give me 70. And I'll have C squared. Oh, that's a C right there. Minus 19C plus 70. And we'll factor 70. Factors of 70 that add to be 19. Well, some factors of 70 are 14 and 5. That, that equals 19. If you multiply that, that's 70. So 14 and 5. And then... We'll do our critical value, C minus 14, or we'll do our factor, C minus 5. And then because I multiplied by 2 in the beginning, I have to come back and divide by 2 at the end to make up for it. And again, if you don't know what I'm doing, I've got a video on this. Please ask me for it in, in a teacher message. So this will be C minus 7. And then we slide this to the front to get 2c minus 5. These are our critical values now. So our critical values are c equals 7. And then c equals 5 halves or 2.5. So those are our two critical values. So that means because this initial inequality was less than, so that means it's going to earn a profit less than, less than 0. Our, our inequality right here is less than zero, so less than means it has to be between those two values. We talked about that in the beginning. We're going to end up with an inequality, smaller number, and it's positive 2.5, Jason. Mr. Rowe. We got 2.5 is less than C, which is less than 7, and that's your final answer. Okay. And then the last example here. All right, so this one says the height of a rocket can be measured by that quadratic. And then during what time interval is the rocket 100 feet off ground? So over, it says over 100 feet off ground. So we've got our quadratic. That represents the height function. We want to know when this is over. 100 feet. So that's your setup. And now everything else is solving a quadratic. We're going to subtract 100 from each side to get everything on one side. We got negative 5s squared plus 55s. And if we subtract 100, we'll get negative 140 right there, greater than 0. Kind of like the last one, <clears throat> everything is divisible by 5. I'm going to change my s and this problem to an x just so I, I don't confuse it with another 5. And that's just part of my work here. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 5. And so dividing by negative 5, that gets me x squared plus 11x minus 5 goes into 140. That's 2, 10, 28 times. Okay, so that's that so far. Oh, I didn't divide that by negative. That's a plus sign right there. All right, so that's a plus sign. I was looking, I was trying to figure out what was wrong. Something was wrong. So I figured it out. <clears throat> so now we're going to go through the process, find our critical values, factors of 28 that add to be 11 or 7 and 4. So our factors are x plus 7. And actually, I made another error, so I'm going to fix that real quick. See, I divided by negative right here, so this is a subtraction sign. <clears throat> Hopefully you saw that and like, what are you doing? So I'm trying to end the video because I know it's getting kind of long. And then we got x minus 4. 
is greater than zero. So our two critical values are x equals seven, x equals four. Again, this is a great, actually I didn't flip that sign either. Whew. Just to remove all sorts of little errors there. So again, let's just, so you don't get confused here. When I divide by negative, I have to flip that inequality. So I had to flip that inequality to less than. So this is less than zero. So our two critical values are x equals seven, x equals negative four. And so when we solve this, our, since it's a less than, we know it has to be between those two values. So smaller number, less than our variable, which is s, which is less than seven. So now, hopefully I didn't confuse you on that last problem. So if I did, let me know and I'll, I'll rework it for you. I'll work a different example. But this is how you work these quadratic inequalities from your lesson. If you have any questions as you're working, please don't hesitate to set up an appointment for a help session and just let me know so I can find you some other resources to kind of help you out.